Hey bitch, what's up bitch? Like what is going on everybody? It is your girl Pyrus and y'all, I just had a thought. Look, let me just let me let me set the scene for you. It's about 10, 11 p.m. I just finished popping my nightly bag of popcorn because for some reason I'm obsessed with popcorn right now. Look, don't hit me with all the health concerns. Everything will be fine. We're all going to die anyways. Anyways, I'm eating my popcorn and I'm sitting here watching anime and I'm like, what the fuck? I don't have a Valentine's. No one's asked me to be their Valentine's yet. So what do I do? I cry. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I don't cry. But I was thinking, I'm like, what am I going to do? We need a Valentine's for the channel. We need someone to be our Valentine's. You know, just to spice it up, jizz it up a little bit. So I get to thinking. And I'm like, the only person that's going to love us great is ourselves our minds or what we have to offer you know we're gonna love ourselves first and i'm thinking what if it was a little bit more deeper than that what if what if <laughs> i don't know where i'm going with this <laughs> i guess i'm trying to introduce the game for today and it is a game about you falling in love with the parasite now i know what you're probably thinking Look, hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out before you. But guys, parasite in love. <laughs> I don't know what I'm getting into. I'm just going to hope for the best. If you guys are interested in watching and you like this video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content from me. And we are just going to get into it. I didn't, I didn't think... I didn't think we'd stoop this low to fall in love with the parasite, but here we are. A rare infection with a brain-eating amoeba is being blamed for the death of a North Carolina- North Carolina? Oh no, oh, no! He was swimming in a water park earlier this month. The amoeba is usually found in shallow fresh water. It can cause several headaches, fever, nausea, and vomiting, which can progress into having a stiff neck, seizures, and a coma. It's only infection, infectious when water is forced up the nose during activities such as diving and water skiing. According to Centers for Disease Control, the CDC, the amoeba is rare but overwhelmingly deadly. In the last 57 years, there have only been 145 known infections, but of those, only four survived. The CDC says the illness is particularly difficult. That's so hard to say. Particularly. The next time you go swimming, wear a nose plug and avoid activities that involve being fully submerged in freshwater areas. This is Gabe Stewart, MBS News. Baby, you wouldn't have to worry about me because I can't even swim. And I'm sorry, I'm being a stereotype. I can't swim, girl. I have a mean doggy paddle, though. I can hit that shit for you. I won't go far, but I'm going to hit it. You feel a rush of happiness as you continue your hike because you hear nothing but nature around you. The birds are chirping, the wind is rustling through the tree branches, and the water is trickling nearby. It is so peaceful compared to your busy office that is currently far, far away from you. The hundreds of emails you get as a project manager can wait until you return from your vacation. Perry, we ain't worried about that hot girl summer. You finally arrive at the lake. The photos you looked through online couldn't convey the beauty of this place. You're so glad to stop here for before entering the cabin you rented for your little vacation. Time to swim is a reward. The hours you spent hiking make your dip in the water all more refreshing. Waves of relief wash over you as you swim around, and after a while you let yourself float to enjoy the moment. You close your eyes, your breathing slows, the sun heats up your face while the water cools your back. I'm sorry y'all. I could never just get into a body of water and start swimming. Like, there's just a lot in that goes into that. Like, there could be a lot of bacteria, animals that want to eat me or parts of me. 
there can be a dead body in the water. You know, you never know what the fuck the lake was used for, so I just can't do that. I'm sorry. You hear a scream, and a wave pushes you to the side. You stab your stabilize yourself, coughing and sputtering for air, trying to clear the water from your mouth and nose. <laughs> a boy laughs. Okay. All right, laughs. Be careful. You could have hurt us both. But nothing happened. His mother calls for him and he swims away. Get the mama too. Death to all of them. Oh. As he steps out of the water, his mother already has a towel in hand and dries his hair. You're a little envious. Clumsy with your words outside of work, you have a hard time connecting more with people you love. Your friends and family do like to spend time with you, but you sometimes feel lacking when you try to show them the same affection. Maybe you would have an easier time if you had a family of your own. Your friend did tell you that her instincts as a new mother helped immensely when taking care of her baby. You hoped that in your case, the instinct would take over in talking to your child. How great would it be to have such a deep connection? You sigh and rise from the lake. I can't be me either. I've just never have. I've just, I'm content with not having children, y'all. Like... I'm too selfish, and I, I just feel like it's good that I know that. Like, and look, you, you don't know until you're older. I don't care. I'm not doing it. Have you seen the list? The list on TikTok of all the things that could happen to you? If you have a child, your nipple can fall off. How does that even happen? You can reattach it? Huh? No, I'm good. I'm good, sweetheart. You arrive in the cabin. You have booked for the next two weeks. The space is too big for just one person, but it also feels luxurious to have some space for yourself. You're basically checking this plate out, place out as a vacation home for the future family that you always dreamed of. Even if you don't have a partner, the thought of taking a trip together fills you with joy. By the fireplace, you look at the couches where you could snuggle with your future family. You smile, imagining your child imitating a bear as they wear the fur that drapes over one of the cushions. You stretch your arms as you yawn, time to unpack and get settled. You put your hand into your bag and take out your vacuum sealed clothes. You pack them this way to make space for other things, your wallet, smartphone, food, toiletries, and some books to pass the time. After putting all your stuff away, you go and take a shower. Half an hour later, you leave the bathroom refreshed and donning a white robe provided by the rental, walking to the couches with a grin and a glass of wine. Get the whole bottle. Okay, yeah, period. Baguette? Is that a cat? What are you reading, girl? What is cat chips? Trickles? What is going on? Spookle? Day two. The sun warms your cheeks and birds chirp as you wake up. What a peaceful morning. It's been a while since you slept this well. You check your phone and notice you've gotten a message from your dad. Attached is a photo of a flower he saw on his way to work. It brightens your day whenever he does this. You want to send him a photo back so you decide today you'll explore your surroundings. Take pictures and make some bookmarks with the flowers you find. After a quick breakfast, shower, and change of clothes, you are ready. Once you're outside, you take a deep breath. You can smell damp moss, flowers, and wet grass. It must have rained a little during the night. You take your smartphone out and start your hike. Your shoes sink in every time you step on the pine needle-covered ground. As you look around, the wind caresses the leaves above you, making their shadows dance on the ground. Soon, you spot some small purple flowers growing nestled fallen between fallen tree trunks, you squat down and take a picture up close. You stare proudly at your photo. A dew drop on one of the petals reflects the sunlight, making the scene feel more magical. You stand up and send it to your dad, or at least you try to. You see your bad reception and give it another attempt, but it doesn't go through. You decide to send it once you have better connection at the cabin. This is fun and all, but where is the parasite? After a long bubble bath, you are ready to prepare your dinner. You cut the meat on a chopping board, almost in rhythmic fashion. After a while, you own- What? 
After a while of only eating takeout, it feels good to cook for yourself again. <laughs> Are you cooking? It looks good. Oh my gosh. Y'all, that made my heart jump. <laughs> oh my god, that is not okay. You let go of your knife too fast and it clatters onto the counter. You whip your head around. No one was there, but you clearly heard a voice. Yeah, he <laughs> in my ear. Like, why are you giggling? Nothing is funny about meat. Slowly, you move around the cabin, peeking into each corridor, but you find no sign of anyone else in the house. Still anxious, you go back to the kitchen. This is a crazy way to indicate, like, to... Oh, shit, that's just a piece of meat in the thing. Okay, girl. You start at the stove and sear the meat in the pan. The fat glistens and the smell makes your mouth water. You almost forget the previous strange incident. Hungry and impatient, you grab a fork and tear into the meat. It's still a little rare and bloody. How y'all eat y'all steak? Y'all be eating hockey pucks? It can't be me. I'm sorry. I gotta eat like some, what is it, medium rare? It has that something in it. Like, I'm sorry, y'all. Like, that shit right there, be, it's, it's too hard when it's all well done. Like, it should be tough as hell. Just, just fucking your mouth up. Uh, what was I reading? You <laughs> enjoy the flavor and relax. Feeling the stress from earlier leave your body. Putting the odd incident behind you. You were still able to find some enjoyment today. Day three. The morning alarm almost gives you a heart attack. No, that like that one iPhone alarm that sounds like... The morning alarm almost gives you a heart attack. With half shut eyes, you search for your phone and hastily turn off the alarm. You sit. I feel like you on vacation, but you just wake up when you wake up, unless you have plans. Cause like when I'm on vacation, I just I don't set an alarm unless I'm at like, honestly, most of my vacations are like anime conventions, so we set an alarm to get that free breakfast when we can. <laughs> you sit up and massage your temples. It's been a while since you had a headache this bad. Sluggishly, you crawl out of bed and make your way to the kitchen. You have brew some tea in hopes that it will help and take it with you to the living room. Are you feeling off because of are you feeling off because of all the hiking you did? Or was it the rare meat? Start Googling it. Like if you Google it, you it might tell you you're about to die. So maybe not. Several hours later, you breathe heavily as you lean against the cold white ceramic of the toilet. This is a crazy depiction of a toilet. Like this this art is good. Like I feel like I'm really there. It's like a Saturday night at a party. The last time you had to vomit was after the last office party. Oh, see, look, I told you. After securing a multi-million dollar deal for the company. Girl, you got money? You got money? The constant flow of alcohol was the only thing making the loud music bearable. But the next morning, you had a hangover from hell. You can't remember much else. Check the kitchen for bad food. I'm sorry, I feel like I would... Like, if this was me, I'd be like, nah, I like I must have drank that water in the pool, and I'm sick now. I'm like a hypochondriac. I'd be, I'd be Googling this shit immediately. Like, <laughs> you know, you bought the food just before your hike, but you can't help but suspect that something you ate might have gone bad. No, not the bread or anything else in the kitchen. It's all fresh. Was it really food poisoning? Could it be some suppressed stress from work finally resurfacing? Or was it too much sun after being holed up in that office for so long? You grab your phone and sit down on the couch. Is it time to Google? You decide to research some more with your phone and open your browser in order to look up your symptoms. It's going to say, you are dead. You are dead right now. You are a zombie. The apocalypse has happened. Um, you are six feet under. Head ache. Can be caused by alcohol, certain foods... Changes in or lack of sleep, poor posture, skip meal, stress. You're guilty of a few. I'm guilty of all of them. How to treat. Rest in a quiet, dark room, hot or cold compress on your forehead or neck. Massage in small amounts of caffeine. Caffeine does not help me. What else can I type in? Nausea. How do you spell that word? Nah. Not sure why I typed that. Maybe we should call a doctor now. Just when you're about to type in a number, your hand seizes up. Your phone falls onto the couch. What was that? You hesitate. You drop your phone from a little muscle cramp. You've had those before. 
Whatever bug you've caught will probably pass by tomorrow morning. You get yourself some tea, a slice of toast, and rest for the day. Just a singular slice of toast, nothing on it? Do people do that, really? That's disgusting. You're just eating bread. Ugh. I don't like the texture of regular bread. <laughs> you slept through an entire day, but you still feel weak when you wake up. You drink some tea and wonder if you should eat something, but you decide it would probably be better to wait until tomorrow and give your stom stomach more time to rest. It'll be a waste of food if you have to throw up again. Call the call the doctor. I'm gonna say call the police. <laughs> call the doctor. You draw yourself to the fireplace and make a fire. You make yourself comfortable on the couch and watch the flames. They sway left to right, and if you aren't careful, you could get lost in their hypnotic dance. You start to feel lonely. Even as you enjoy looking at the flames, you miss your mother's chicken soup that she cooked whenever you got sick. You snuggle even deeper into the blankets. Why'd you have to get sick all alone out in the woods? Your mind drifts off, and you look around the room in a daze. Is the room getting bigger? Is it? Maybe you imagined it. <laughs> it's alright, I'm here. You force yourself upright and seize the fire place. <laughs> you see, you force yourself upright and seize the fireplace poker, brandishing it in front of you while you search for the source of the voice. You could have sworn it was right next to you, but there's no one else in this room. After what happened the other day, you checked as much. Of course, you're the only one here, right? You back into the corner, so at least you aren't ambushed from behind. Then you take out your phone and try to call for help. No. Ooh! Not no. No, David, no. An intense pain wells up in your head. Oh my gosh. You Joe, this is the craziest Valentine's game ever. This isn't a Valentine's game. I don't think it's marketed as such, but we made it one. You jolt in pain and let go of your phone. It hits the ground, bounces, and falls flat. You tremble and kneel down to retrieve it. You sigh when you see that your phone is in still intact. Okay, whatever just made its presence known seems to not like it when I want to call for help. You don't care. Your thumb hovers over the dial pad. You're about to make this call. Call the police. That won't help. You nearly throw your phone out of fear, but you stop yourself in time. You only feel a little pain. Tears roll down your cheeks. You hate this voice. It's swimming in your head and it's seizing up your hand. It's like it's controlling you. No, no. Now you sound delusional. What voice? You mean thinking, right? That's what everyone does. You're just fighting your own intuition, aren't you? You close your phone and just go to bed. You hope this ends soon. I'm sorry, but no, I would definitely be calling the ambulance to come get me. Like, come immediately. Like, please. Hello, sir. Yes, I'm hearing shit. No, this is not a bad trip. Please come get me. A-S-A-P. I'm sobbing. When you open your eyes, you're not sure what you're looking at. Colors, patterns. Why can't you focus? Good morning. Uh-oh, not we get- Not- you got to come over and you doing this. He got the he got the the My World 2.0 cut and he's acting like this. This behavior is unacceptable. Unleash me. Panic floods your body. There at the foot of your bed grins a ghoulishly covered man. He's made of squiggly lines. Get out of here. Who is he? How did he break in? You snatch a nearby pillow and throw it at the intruder, but it sails right through him. You stare in sheer disbelief. Are you a ghost? No, no, I'm a living being. We met at the lake. I was looking for a place to multiply and you were just so warm and nourishing. I couldn't resist. That's, there's so many things I could say about that. But, but I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to keep playing the game. And finally, you can see me. He leans forward. Ooh. <laughs> Ugh, I just got the ick. Ew. Ew. Hi. I'm an amoeba. I think you humans call me Nigeria flower. Girl, you, you already knew when you read that that I wouldn't be able to fucking pronounce it. Like, don't look at me like that. 
So I'm starting to see things. I need help. Wait. Are you getting a doctor? Of course. So you're trying to get me. Oh my god, he's shaking. He's shaking. You feel intense pain as a new wave sends you into agony. How could you? We need to stay together. Don't you understand? Wait. Wait, please calm down. I won't do it. Good. Pain disappears. You feel even weaker than before. Exhausted, you lay back down on the bed. He's an amoeba. He's in your head, and he sprouted more and more of him to root around in your brain. And the pain is killing you. Killing you. So wait, aren't I just gonna die then? He doesn't answer immediately. Don't say it like that, Marlo. Isn't it wonderful we get to spend time together? You have a hard time wrapping your head around this situation. But what you do know is that you're in bad shape and this thing won't let you call for help. Did it have to be me? Wasn't there a better place for you? No, never. Well, of course it's rare for my kind to infect humans. But I see it as a sign. And you know what I saw when I got closer to your brain? Your wish for a family, Marlo. It's as strong as mine. He comes closer and puts his head on your stomach. Y'all, this is a nightmare. Like, this is actually the most terrifying shit I think I've ever played in the visual. Now, other than Scarlet Hollow. That shit's kind of, that shit's fucking terrifying too. But this shit right here, what the fuck? Ugh. This is where a baby would grow, right? He breathes in deeply. Is this how a fetus in the womb feels? Why would they ever leave their mom's body? It's so warm and comforting inside you humans. A shudder runs through your body. You want to hit him and push him away, even though you know your hands would phase right through him. It makes this new family arrangement easier for you. To make this new family arrangement easier for you, I'll even let you call me Niall. Like your unrequited love from your university days? He can dig into memories? I can offer you everything you couldn't have, but always wanted. Why are you frowning? Are you not happy? You put on your poker face. Who would have thought that your days dealing with rude stakeholders would come in handy for something like this? No, it sounds good. Really good. <laughs> right? But suddenly his smile fades. He stands up and looks at you with worry. You're getting weaker. And you were enjoying yourself so much too. It made me smile. What was that drink you had? White wine? Yes. I wish I could drink that with you. It's something humans do with each other, right? Well, I guess we just have to take what we can. Is there something we can do together? How about I sit with you at the dinner table? Is this him playing house with you? Um, I think my strategy is going to be appease the um insane man amoeba thing. Of course, my dear. I want her to get out of this. You shove down all the disgust you feel as fear has pushed you to say this face, phrase. Niall blinks in surprise. Then he smiles at you in pure bliss. God, now am I flustered. Let's go then, after you. You walk to the kitchen while Niall follows you. You can feel his gaze on you. Your hand reaches for the pantry, but Niall interrupts you. You can't just eat bread alone. You're already weak. How about something more filling? Bro, him, like, making sure she eats so he can keep, like, be living, like, have enough time to sustain himself is terrifying. What is this game? What is going on? I will also try to lessen the nausea, so please, for us, you clench your fist. That's rich coming from him. You turn to the fridge and take out some eggs. You're fine if I make some scrambled eggs, right? 
Yeah, that sounds better. The pain and nausea have truly lessened. Seems like if you humor him, you can at least keep your head clear enough to think. Oh my gosh. He, this man is humming. You hear Niall hum as you crack open some eggs and turn on the stove. Curiosity gets the better of you, and you glance at him as the eggs sizzle. He sits on a chair at the dining table, swaying left and right, happ happily watching you, happily waiting for you to finish cooking. Sorry, y'all. What is this madness? This peaceful scene unnerves you more than anything, but you play along for now. After you choke some bites down, he leans forward in excitement. <laughs> it tastes better with some company, right? I guess so. I guess you're still tired. I'm a little sad you're not as excited as I am. Sorry. Maybe I should be more patient until you get used to all this. He then lets you eat in peace until you're finished. You clean up and begin to fidget as you're not sure how Nile wants to continue the day. Suddenly you get goosebumps and slump down. You, you heave and a wave of nausea is surging through you. Oh no, I thought I could give you more time. He reaches for your arm, but it goes right through. I wish I could help you stand. After a few seconds, your nausea dissipates. How can you survive this situation? What should you do? Is there a way to be rid of him? Let's go back to bed, alright? You both shuffle back into the bedroom. You lay down in the bed, and Niall sits down beside you. He strokes your hair as you gradually fall asleep. Day 7. You hardly slept and still feel weak. Your neck is very stiff, and the weird colors appear again before your eyes. Oh, you're awake. Good morning, dear. You turn your head and see multiple Niles next to the bed. You suppress the urge to scream. Here, I wanted to show you what our children inside you look like. What? I'm a mother? There's even one that looks like you. Uh, here. Get it away! Kill it! Kill it! Kill it! Kill it! Set yourself on fire at this point. S set yourself on fire. Ain't no way that's living in my head. I'm going, I'm, s ooh, child. Nope. Yeah. Set yourself on fire. That's the only way out of it. Isn't it cute? I don't know. Absolutely precious. Mm hmm Please let me go. This is the, this is the one yandere s visual novel that is working effectively on me. Please let me out. Please let me out. You try to hug it, but you can't touch it. You're desperate to make him happy. I'm glad you like it. It's our family, after all. He takes the baby back. Come get breakfast when you're ready. You seem weaker today, so I'll stay silent while you sleep a bit more, alright? You nod and lay down. After a few hours, you reluctantly sit up. Your grumbling stomach won't shut up. While you walk to the kitchen, you assess your situation and try to think of a plan. Nile won't let you call a doctor nor other help. He loves acting like a husband to you. If you humor him, he will try to lessen the effects of the effect infection. But if he stays, he will certainly die. You arrive in the kitchen and Nile shows himself. So you have enough strength to eat now. Great. How do I get out of this? Is there some way... Is there a way to somehow use his fixation on family against him? A slight headache interrupts your thoughts. What are you thinking so hard about? It's like something is moving around in your head. What are you doing? I just want to know what you're thinking. You try your hardest to think of something positive about Niall. You can't risk him seeing what you truly think. 
a lovely day to spend with Niall. <laughs> oh, you charmer. He sounds absolutely delighted. The headache disappears and you sigh in relief. I think somewhere in your memories, it said a little caffeine helps when you have a headache. Yeah, coffee sounds great right now. You put on a kettle and shake some instant coffee into your mug. Then you take a yogurt cup from the fridge and get a spoon. Niall's eyes glimmer with excitement, as if he expects you to do some magic trick. <laughs> Is yogurt good? Yeah, it's sweet and cold. Refreshing. After a while, you start to play with your spoon. Maybe it's better if you only eat a bit. You don't want to upset your stomach. Come on, eat a little more. We have more mouths to feed after all. The reminder makes your makes you drop your spoon. This is terrifying, y'all. What's wrong? Him. Everything about him and what he does to you. You stare at him with wide open eyes. You bite down hard. You bite down hard on your lips to hold yourself back from giving him a piece of your mind. Are you angry? No. No, I think you're just worried. Well, we both want you to be healthy, right? So I'm allowed to worry about you, right? Sure. This is a nightmare. When the water is ready, you pour some into your mug. After adding some milk, you mix the coffee and drink it. Do you feel better? Yes. There's palpable tension between you two. Niall makes the first move, putting his hand on yours. Ew, please get away from me. Here, this might cheer you up. You see blue shapes glow and dance in the space between your hands. Do you like it? You slowly nod. Oddly, this beautiful dance of colors comforts you. It pains you that he seems to care, despite being the cause of your suffering. Do you want to spend some time together in the living room? Maybe watch the fireplace? Watch the fire in the fireplace? Niall sighs. Maybe sleep will help. I hope we can do something together tomorrow, Marla. Now let's go. He walks beside you as you walk back to your bedroom. Tomorrow you have to get it together. No matter what it takes. Oh shit, y'all is getting serious. Y'all, I'm immersed in the plot. I'm sorry I haven't spoken that much because, bitch... You wake up in your weakest state yet. Your skull feels full and ready to burst. Your heavy limbs struggle to move on command. Your breathing is so dry and ragged, you're attacked by shivers from a sweltering fever. You don't have much time left. You steal yourself and decide that you have to push through no matter how upset he gets. You have to at least try. In your dizzy state, you look up and there he is. Hi. Good morning. You wish dearly that he would just leave your body. He acts like a husband and wants to be a father. What a disgusting display of this fake family. Wait. A father? Niall, I have a question. Yes? He strokes your hair as he speaks. How you wish you could smack his hand away. Why do you want to be a father? Hmm. Well... I sort of already am, right? I believe I'm pretty good at it. Hmm. Let me save. I doubt you know what a great father is, Niall. What? Well, at least not in the human sense. I mean, how could he have learned if you had no one to teach you? Then tell me. Children take priority. You think I don't know that? How many of your decisions are for your own survival? How much of this is really for the survival of our children? Good, he's getting insecure. You haven't moved much. Are you too weak to stand up today? Is it even too hard to talk now? How about I dig deeper and see for myself? 
you feel something pushing and pulling inside your head. Show me of a moment. Maybe now I will show you mercy. Marlo, are you this tired? You nod. I beg you to make the pain stop. Nile looks over you with worry, pacing around the room, chewing a fingernail. How about... He puts a hand on your forehead. Does this make you feel better? No, what are you trying to do? I saw a glimpse of your memory once when you were little. I believe your mother did this for you when you were sick as well. <sighs> Silly you. I never, I had a fever then, not an infection. Guilt flashes across his face, but he shakes his head and affection returns to his gaze. I will think of a way. For now, sleep, my dear. Is this going to be our last slumber? With the last of your energy spent, you drift off into a deep slumber. Oh, we're not making it past day 10, y'all. I don't think. Your breathing is shallow as you wake up in your bed. Patterns dance in front of your eyes and you hear Niall humming. You know he's not real, but you could still feel his warmth next to you. Is it comforting? Are you scared? It doesn't matter anymore. All you know is that you're experiencing him. Hope is gone from your mind. You can't tell illusions from reality anymore. You turn your head towards Nile and try to focus your eyes on him. <laughs> oh, how beautiful. You. He reaches out to you and caresses your hair. You must have turned and tossed around a lot in your sleep. Why well, you kind of sound like Michael Eugen a little bit? The bed sheets are like a veil on them. That's some hard ass imagery. You ate that up, writer. Maybe this is the only way we can marry. I know we don't have a lot of time. I feel you getting weaker by the second. Why do I feel like I, I, I just got the worst ending? But don't worry. I am with you. Until death do us part. You feel him wrap you in his embrace. You never imagined that death would feel so warm. You slowly close your eyes as you hear Niall humming the wedding march. This has to be the top, one of the top ten ways to go. Jeez, y'all, I'm I'm I, I'm very disturbed. Like, <laughs> I'm like, that was an experience. Um, um. Well, okay. Um, if you guys like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe for more content from me. Um, y'all, this shit was crazy. Um, I hope you have a wonderful night or day wherever you are in this amoeba filled universe don't go swimming bitch wear a nose plug please please i cannot have this happening to you hell no i have been virus and i am out peace <laughs> see ya <laughs>